All right, so we now have our game working as of last week. Uh, but now what we'd like to do is actually have, uh, this looks terrible, right? Just it's circles and squares. It's not a fun game. I mean, I've seen some games that look like this, but uh, I don't like them, and other people don't either. So what we're going to do is we're just going to polish it up a bit by basically putting in um, replacement graphics. Uh, some we're going to make now, and then some we'll make, uh, some I already built for you. So just for expediency... Um, if you open up little, the lab materials, uh, it'll be on my site in the usual spot. It'll also be a blackboard underneath the assignment and resources. Uh, but basically, I added in cone idle, cone jump, and cone run. So idle, if I hit play, you'll see it's just him doing that. Uh, and then run is him running, basically. Okay, And then jump is just a single frame of like Mario kind of thing. So nothing too special there. So what we're going to do is basically put that into this, and we're going to work on this first. This might be all we do in this video, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so uh, let's go timeline. Basically, i got to open up my player, and this graphic is just really not doing it for me. So I'm going to grab the whole thing, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a new layer first, just so I can see this is what I was planning on. So in the new layer, what I'm going to do is put cone idle, and I'm just going to grab it and drop it here okay and that looks really big okay and let's go ahead and I'm gonna click and drag and I'm going to extend my frames to three because I have idle jump and run and I was gonna hit F5 to extend so now that's holding for three frames okay now on this layer two on the second one I'm going to hit uh, F7 which is gonna insert a blank keyframe Okay, so blank keyframe, and then I'm going to put, um, actually, before I bother doing that, let's go ahead and scale this. So I'm going to grab him, and I'm going to go to properties, and we have our scale and stuff here. So I'm going to hit Q to scale it. Okay, there it goes. I'm going to hold shift so that it stays proportionate, and this is why I left the circle there. And I'm just going to scale it down until it's roughly the size I'm going to try and center it on the thing. Okay, so we'll say like that, right? And uh, it's 70.1 is what I have for the width. We'll go by width. So we'll say 70.1, okay? That's good. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here on the second one, and I'm going to drop, go to my library, and I will drop run, because that's kind of the most important one. Put it in here, okay? And I put it right in the center. And I'm just going to go here, and for width, I'll type in 70.1. And it went way over there, which is disappointing. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to go to the last frame here, and we're just, again, going to hit F7, which inserts a blank keyframe. You can also go to Insert. Uh, I thought it would be there. Well, you can just right-click and insert blank keyframe. That's another way of doing it. Well, whatever. You want to put a blank keyframe in. Anyway, so we put one there. Um, and we're going to put uh, jump. So we'll just drop it, put jump, jump right there, and go to properties. I'm type in 70.1. So just so they should all be roughly the same scale, but I'm going to go through and just make sure that they are indeed the same scale. So I'm going to control plus plus. And let's just see. So does this look like an okay transition? I'm looking at it, and this looks a little small to me. So I'm going to grab it, I'm going to hold shift, and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to move it up a little here too, just using my arrow keys, and let's see. Um, that looks okay. And let's look at jump, and that's acceptable. Good enough. Okay. So. I have those. I no longer need layer one. I only left it in there just so I could see where it should be in comparison. So that, I'm just going to go ahead and trash. Get rid of that. That graphic's not good to me. Now, if I were to play this game, he's just going to go, it's going to look not good. So what we need to do uh, is this. We can do this a couple different ways. Uh, we can tell, we're going to basically through code say, play what's on frame one, play what's on frame two, or play what's on frame three, which is great, but what would be better is to um, do this. I'm going to click on this 
over here to zoom in just so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to click on this frame. And I'm going to label this frame. It just makes it easier to work with if I put labels for each section. So the first one is idle. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to, I'm going to label this frame idle. And hit enter. And you'll see, hopefully, I don't know if you can see it, but it says idle. Woohoo! Okay. Click on the second frame and we're going to name this one run. And we'll click on the last one and we're going to name this one jump. Okay. And so now what we can do is that normally when we use code and we say, you know, go to frame 1 or 12 or whatever, uh, we can just say go to frame and we can use the label instead of a frame number. And that's just better because that way when you're looking at the code, uh, it makes more sense. Um, otherwise, you're like, I don't even know what's on. I mean, you would assume that if it's supposed to be running, that that's what's on frame 1. But it's just it's just a nicer way of working. Um, it's useful for things. Okay, so that's fine. That's all we need to actually do with this. I'm going to back this up. And uh, so you just double click or click on scene up here. I'm going to hit F9 or you go to uh, window actions. I'm going to select the frame one here. And we're just going to add a couple of things. Okay. So uh, let's add an animation section. So I'm going to go on the very bottom of what we wrote here, this um, update loop. Okay. I'm just going to add it to the bottom. Okay. So the last thing we did is right here. You can see this right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to say, you know, animations. Uh, applied. All right, fabulous. Okay, so basically, there we need one of two things right off the bat. So the, um, what I'm going to do is have it that um, if you're on the ground, uh, have idle, and if you're not on the ground, have jump. So basically, that jump animation, which isn't any animation, it's just a single frame, is going to show both if they're falling and if they're jumping. So literally, if you're not touching the ground, I want you to do that. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to say if, and if you remember up here, we have a thing that's checking whether we're touching the ground, right? So, um, uh, ground check. Okay, right here we have it, right? So we say if you're hitting ground check, it's ground bump is true or false. So I'm going to use that ground bump. So I'm going to go down here and say if ground bump. Now you could say if ground bump is equal to true. This would also work. But ground bump is a Boolean, so it's either true or false. I don't have to say if it's equal to true. Uh, it'd be equal, equal to. I put one equals, but I don't have to say that. I can just say ground bump. So it's the same thing as putting that, just so you get the idea. I don't want you to get confused. All right, so if it's true, let's just go ahead and do player dot, so the player, and then go to and stop it's just a built-in function and i want to go to and stop and we're going to go ahead and do idle oops we got to put the idle which is what the um oops is the name of the um there we go is the name of that frame that we put right so otherwise it'd be go to and stop and i'd put the frame number this this way i can put the label and it's like that better so if ground bump then do that else if you're not ground bumping Right, we're gonna do player dot go to and stop, and I want you to go to and stop on jump. And this should work right off the bat. So let's test it out real quick. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see. All right. Okay. So you can see, if we're not just on the ground, we do that. And if we're on the ground, we're doing idle. Works great. But you will notice that there's no walking or whatever, right? But that part's working pretty good, right? So, um, yay. That was pretty simple and not too hard at all, all right? Okay. But I obviously want to be able to do running. So I'm going to have a second qualifier in here. So we're going to say, if it's ground bump, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one, okay? What we're going to do now is we're going to test the player speed, okay? So we're going to say, okay, first, if you're touching, if you're not touching the ground, go ahead and do jump. But if you are touching the ground, we have two options, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if um, x speed, which I think that's what we named it up here, right? Let me double check. Yeah, x speed. That's the thing that's, that's um, keeping track of our current speed. So we're going to say basically if our speed, if x speed um, is greater than 1, so we're moving basically, 
I want you to go ahead and do player dot yeah dots oh like that's sorry go to and stop and we're gonna have you do run like that keep hitting that okay like that right so basically if the play x speed is greater than one it's going to play the run thing right now we need to do an else else you're gonna go ahead and do player dot go to and stop and that one's going to be idle all right this isn't gonna work <laughs> uh, rather than going through the whole thing and previewing it it will work but we have it right now that if our speed is one that means that we go to the right so if we're moving this way if I go to the left my speed will be less than one so that doesn't really work so um, it only works in one direction. So we literally have to do the same thing we just did here, uh, but copy and like just copy it again. So after this if, I'm gonna add another one. We'll say else if, so it's gonna test that first. Then we're gonna say, okay, if that isn't the case, then else if x speed is less than minus one. So there's a threshold here. Um, and we're just gonna put the same thing. I'll just grab this again. So basically, We'll see if we're if it's moving more than one uh that animation will play so if you're mo if our if our speed is currently greater so if it's like 0.1 it's not going to play it's going to go ahead and do idle so there's a there's a threshold between them but um now if i hit this this will work there is going to still be an issue you might already know what it is but we'll, we shall find out if you guessed it and okay Yay, look, it's working. But watch. Duh, duh, duh. Right? I'm Michael Jackson. I'm doing a moonwalk. That's no good. Okay, so we just have to flip our character, which is pretty easy. So now to do that, though, um, we need uh, basically to flip it. Now, I can't just say, oh, make it negative one because the player has a specific scale right now. So what I want to do is I want to I want to make a scale variable that's going to hold the current scale. So whatever the... Whatever the player's starting at for its scale, it's going to hold that. And then we're even going to make that number positive or negative, depending on the direction we go. So I'm just going to go to the very top, and we're just going to add a variable. Uh, let's do it right underneath this. Yeah, whatever. So var, uh, and it is going to be player scale. That's just the name I decided. And it's going to be a number because it could be point whatever. And we are going to initially set it to a value of the player scale, oops, lowercase, scale x. So basically, wherever the current scale x is, so the this way, we're going to store that. I don't need to scale it on the y, right? I don't need to flip it this way. I need to flip it this way. So we're going to store its initial whatever it's scale in into this number that's called player scale. And then all I got to do, it's going to be really easy. Um, down here where we do the animation, I'm just going to add it to these. So I'll just add another um, bit of code here. We're just going to do player dot um, scale x. We're going to set it equal to, uh, so we're going to the right, uh, just the regular player scale. So we'll say um, player scale. So whatever the initial, because he's already facing to the left. So if we're going to the right, I want to keep it that way, right? So just player dot scale x is player scale. So actually this initially will do nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Control C. And we're gonna add it to the going the other direction. And what we're gonna do is it's gonna be minus player scale. So that's gonna be the inverse of what it is. So basically uh, we take the variable, but if you put a minus in front of it, it does the opposite. So that's the idea, all right? So now if I hit control enter and we play it, We stuck on that 62. I don't know. Uh, we play it. Come on, you can do it. You will see. Woo! Yay! He does things, right? So that's super awesome. Okay. Now, obviously, it's not perfect because you can see he doesn't turn. There's other ways of going about doing it, but this is just a quick, easy way. So we're going to say that's good enough. All right. There's lots of things that we could do. He can still stick into the ground, and, you know, there's limits. All right, so that looks acceptable, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you do decide that you want to, like, 
build on this, and I'll show you an example later on of um, probably not this week, maybe next week when I give you guys the next uh, project. Of uh, I had a student that did this and uh, last year, and his is awesome. He did like Sonic. Uh, I'll show you that one. But um, anyway, that's uh, that's good for this. So we basically set up that now we put in the polish for our player. So basically the graphics are there. Now we could add other things where like if the enemy kills them, show like a different graphic where he's like, uh, you know what I mean? But um, I'm not going to worry about that. That This is good enough at least to uh, get us by. Like it, it looks acceptable. All right. So in the next video, we will work on the next thing. So maybe it'll be, um, I don't know, maybe it'll be the end.